welcome friends now we have understood that what are the generic type of uh, output for the manufacturing strategy in our earlier sessions we discussed the process of developing the manufacturing strategy and we also discussed the output of manufacturing strategy output in the form of uh, some generic classification for the manufacturing strategy if you recall in our last session we discussed the classification given by roth and miller that three generic type of strategic organizations are possible caretakers marketeers and innovators now once we understand the basic idea basic philosophy of these three types of organizations then probably for the practical purpose we should be able to use a combination of these generic strategies i strongly recommended that marketer and innovator type of clubbing is the most suitable type of strategy in the current circumstances where markets are highly dynamic markets are turbulent changing daily and therefore you have to have a market oriented and at the same time the rate of change is so rapid that if you are not able to fulfill if you are not able to give those product on a faster rate you will not be able to win the competition so that providing products at the faster rate comes from your innovator strategy and understanding the markets on a regular basis comes from the marketer type of strategy and therefore the combination of these two is the most ideal one now in this particular session we will see that how the manufacturing has evolved from its traditional view to the strategic view we are since last 21 sessions talking about the strategic role of manufacturing that strategic role is about providing some kind of help some kind of input in development of the corporate strategy of the organization now in this particular session we will be discussing that what is those strategic inputs what is those strategic inputs which manufacturing can provide so we call them enlightened view of manufacturing and let us see a comparative analysis of traditional view and the enlightened view or the strategic view of the manufacturing for various key activities so our discussion is divided in these three parts the first part is what are the important issues on which we will see what is the traditional view and what is the enlightened view or the strategic view how manufacturing can provide some kind of strategic advantage with respect to these key areas now if we start this discussion the first important thing is manufacturing's importance per se how manufacturing is important or how far manufacturing is important now the traditional view is about development of local economy wherever manufacturing will be it will help in the development of the local economy now you need not to go very far after independence when in 1947 the problem of economic development or the equal economic development of india came so our leaders at that time thought that developing manufacturing facilities in different corners of the country will help the local economic development and as per that idea public sector enterprises were established in different corners of the country so to that extent that idea was very brilliant lot of public sector enterprises came in different corners of the country and 
those PSUs provided local economic benefit. Those PSUs helped in the economic development of those regions. But now the enlightened view says that manufacturing is not important only for the local level, but it is a very important national activity. And therefore, if you see the present day of leadership, they talk of make in India, because they know that manufacturing is not going to serve only the local purpose, but it is also going to serve the national economy. And we continuously target that how you can increase the share of manufacturing in the overall GDP of the country. So, from local economic concern to national importance that is the first level of transition which happens with respect to importance of manufacturing. The second area is production operations role within corporate strategy. Within corporate strategy, what is the role of production and operation function? The traditional view say it was just at the fringe. The role of production and operation was just at the fringe. After all the debate at the corporate level has taken place, you just tell, you just inform the production people, operation people that what is to be done. So, they were almost non-existent in the part of or in the corporate level strategic debates. But nowadays, we are moving into the direction where production operations role in the corporate level strategy is almost central. And if we are able to achieve this central role for the operation or production in the corporate level debates, that is actually the manufacturing strategy that how you can increase the role of operation activities in the corporate level debate. So, that is as a fringe activity to the central activity that is another major shift which is going to happen if we are able to do all these exercise which we discussed in our last many sessions. The third important activity, third important key area is related to production operations involvement and its image, the perception. Now, the involvement and image was tactical and reactive in the conventional organizations. As we just discussed that corporate level strategies, corporate level debates took place and those output of corporate level debates were informed to the production operation people and they were at the fringe and they had to adjust according to those decisions. Therefore, I am saying that the involvement and image were tactical and reactive in nature. But nowadays, we are moving to this strategic and proactive role of manufacturing that when you are central to the corporate level debate. So, you are not part of tactical, you are part of a strategic level activity in the organization and you are not reactive, you are not responding to the decisions taken by the corporate level debate, rather you are proactive, you are contributing in taking those decisions. So, that is a major shift from the traditional view to the contemporary view to the strategic view or to the enlightened view of manufacturing that earlier we were reactive and now we are going to be proactive with respect to involvement and image of operations. And uh, the whole debate which uh, if you remember we discussed from Hayes and Wheelwright.
in that Hayes and Wheel write they were saying that organizations are internally supportive and they have to be externally proactive and that is the meaning from reactive to proactive that we need to move from stage 1 to stage 4 type of organization as per Hayes and Wheelwright framework where in India particularly many organizations are still in the stage 1 type of activity. And as we discussed in our last session most of these stage 1 organizations are nothing but the caretaker type of organizations. In our different sessions we are giving different names, but if you try to link them you will find that uh, whether I talk a stage 1 type of organization from the Hayes and Wheelwright classification or if I talk of caretaker type of organizations from the Roth and Miller classification they are almost similar. They are not developing any competency they are remaining just as it is and therefore, they always remain in a reactive mode and their perception their image is also not to provide any strategic advantage. And nowadays when we are going to have marketeer or innovator type of organizations or a combination of these two we become a stage 4 type of organization as per Hayes and Wheelwright. So, that is a major shift we are expecting from the involvement and image point of view. Then another key area is uh, production and operations role in the company. Now, whenever you talk of uh, production operations role we talk in terms of uh, cost cutting all other activities all other order winners we feel are being provided by other functional areas, but the cost cutting is the operations responsibility. So, traditionally the role of operation is only limited to cost cutting the whole efforts whole efforts were directed toward cost cutting and even the idea of quality which got developed in Japan and that idea of quality is also aiming towards cost cutting because they gave a very broader view of quality which is not just quality conformance, but reducing waste and the idea of reducing waste was also in line to achieve low cost. Because when you are reducing waste you talk of cost of quality how to minimize the cost of quality all those things were targeting towards low cost. So, the role of operation people always considered though this is the value adding activity in the organization, but uh, the focus shifted from value addition to cost cutting. How to add more value nobody discussed about that people started discussing and all through in our literature all through in our practices with respect to role of operation in the organization the focus was only on cost cutting. So, that was the only order winner or qualifier we were expecting from operation, but nowadays in our enlightened view in our strategic view we consider that cost cutting is only one part of operation it is in fact used as a competitive V1 for delivery flexibility, quality, design, capabilities. So, there are many more things which organizations can achieve by using operations appropriately. So, the role is much wider and we had a very narrow vision of operations role that it is only limited to cost cutting rather it can provide you delivery flexibility, it can provide you better quality, it can provide you different types of designs, it can provide you different types of capabilities. So, we need to have all those things 
we were highly underestimating the operations function in our organization. Then another key area is uh, market requirements. Now market requirements is related to in our traditional way that market requirement is very very static and as organization I know those market requirements. So, this was the belief and uh, how to provide those market requirements, how to do those market requirements uh, that was the idea of uh, traditional view of marketing, traditional view of operations because these things were static and known. So, there was uh, no specific requirement coming to operation and uh, how to easily determine and just provide those uh, static requirements to the market. So, that was the traditional role and therefore, most of our ancient organizations not so ancient, but organizations developed in 60s, 70s, 80s were caretaker type of organizations, where the idea of marketeering and innovation was very limited because of this aspect of static and known. But nowadays, what is happening that markets have moved from static and known to turbulent and changing markets are becoming turbulent, they are changing, the requirements are changing. In our many sessions earlier, we have discussed that order winners and qualifiers are market and time dependent and that is the meaning that market requirements are changing, market requirements are turbulent and therefore, we require skills from production, operation and all these other functional activities that they do not provide only the technical inputs, but also help us in supporting these changing requirements. So, technical inputs were related to provide the low cost, but if different types of requirements are coming from the market, so how my functional areas how this operation area can help me in providing those uh, changing requirements of the market. So, that is if we are able to do that, uh, that is the strategic view of the manufacturing. Then another important thing is product development or in some literature you may also find this word new product development. Now, in this new product development this was earlier in the traditional way was considered the responsibility of the marketing department. So, this was marketing department's responsibility and therefore, the very idea of saying operation as reactive activity because the product development was taking place by the marketing department and the marketing used to give that specification to the operation people to manufacture that product to produce that product. So, therefore, we used to say that uh, operation is a marketing driven activity because new product development was resting with the marketing department. But in the strategic view, in the enlightened view, when we say that uh, the development of manufacturing strategy also starts from the analyzing of the market, from understanding the market. So, we also try to understand what is the requirement of the market and that requirement of market will help us in developing the new product. So, now we have a holistic effort where the team members from operation and production they also get involved in the new product development activity from a very early stage and the idea like concurrent engineering. is just to develop cross functional teams. So, nowadays in new product development uh, we have cross functional teams. The earlier way of developing new product was resting with the marketing department only, but now the cross functional team 
where people from finance, people from marketing, people from operations, people from after sales services from all these different functional activities sit together and they try to evolve the product. So, now in the current way of developing the product, the production operations people provide very very important strategic input. What are the strengths of operations people? These are told at a very early stage to the marketing people, so that the specifications can be developed, so that you can launch those products, you can commercialize those products at an early date. If you develop a very good design, but you are not able to manufacture and if you want to manufacture, it requires lot of time to develop those capabilities, maybe by that time the market demands further change. So, there will not be any point of that type of uh, design development. So, we therefore, are favoring things like concurrent engineering, development of cross functional teams, uh, so that right from the beginning we have people, those who understand a holistic vision of the product development. So, that is another important change which is happening from our conventional view to the enlightened view. Then another important key areas are with respect to process technology. Now, process technology earlier was considered that it is simply a means to reduce the labor efforts. How to reduce the efforts in an organization that was the purpose of process that what type of processes, what type of machines you are using. Now, in our current way of understanding the process technology, we see that we need to develop a balance, a harmony between machine and man. So, machine alone is not sufficient, man alone is not sufficient. How to optimally use a combination of man and machine? If you are doing a routine kind of job, that can be very well done by robots. So, let us use robots for those type of things, but where we need a very skillful activity which is to be done by humans that will be done by humans only. So, how to use your automated system with manpower that is a very important crucial thing which is happening nowadays. So, if you see a assembly line in any manufacturing sector, you will see that robots are working continuously in the assembly line because they do repetitively same type of work. But if you go to an operation theater and where each job is very unique, you will find doctors, personals are working in, in a operation theater. So, that is the enlightened view that how to use both these automation robots and manpower in our organizations. Now, another key area is that what is the role of production people who are involved in the front line activities, the one who are supervising at the shop floor area, who are my works manager, what is their role in this whole process. Now, in our conventional way, we used to see that uh, their roles are more like repetitive in nature, they keep doing same thing in all the shifts and uh, they are given very narrow task. So, one is repetitive narrow task and since they do repetitive and narrow task, so low level of skill is required and not much training provided to them. So, in fact, they were not part of our human resource development activities, but nowadays even the front line executives are supposed to have multi skilled. They need to have variety of roles and we have concepts like uh, human resource and work excellence. So, for that purpose job rotation, job enrichment uh, those type of things are becoming popular, because achieving these objectives of manufacturing strategy 
and then finally becoming a world class manufacturing organization is not possible without proper human resource management. So, human resource management also became a very important part of our strategic thinking in our current organizations. Then another key area is the remuneration, how much wages you need to give for your front line production personals, supervisors, works managers, labor etcetera. So, the idea came from the developers of scientific management. So, the developer of scientific management persons like F W Taylor, they proposed that the wages should be based on piece work. The work you do accordingly you will be paid. So, that was the idea of F W Taylor piece wage system and that traditional view was continuing. But now in our contemporary view, we say that salary is a reward according to your skills, not according to your work. The kind of skills you possess salary should be given according to them and it is the duty of your seniors that we should be able to take work according to your skills. So, it is my fault, it is uh, my poor organization that if I am not able to take work as per your potential as per your capabilities, but that should not hinder that should not lower down your wages, your wages will be as per your skills. Then another key area is alliances with other companies, because when you are in a business you are not alone, you have suppliers on one side, you have customers on the other. So, you need to have alliances with these suppliers and customers. Now, earlier thought was limited to share the cost of uh, research and development, whatever research and development I am doing at my organization, I will like to share that cost with my suppliers and with my customers. And uh, we used to have some kind of trust deficits. I always used to have some kind of hidden agenda which I was keeping secret with my suppliers as well as with my customers. So, that was the traditional view that I will not be giving them complete business secrets. So, uh, trust deficit was a very important component in the traditional way, but nowadays in the enlightened view of manufacturing we need to have a very strong, a very long term committed alliances with our partners, with our suppliers, with our customers, then only we can get success in the market. So, we need to have uh, this long term association and this long term association if we have. So, we say that this is the strategic supplier buyer relationship. So, the next key area is that supplier buyer relationship that uh, supplier buyer relationship earlier was only limited to the cost related factors that whoever is going to give me the lowest possible cost they will be my suppliers. So, that was the original idea of supplier buyer relationship, but nowadays there are many things which are happening in the market dynamism is there in the market, uh, we need very fast product development and uh, if we only look for low cost kind of suppliers, uh, we may not be able to achieve these other capabilities. For that purpose, uh, we need to have committed and long term supplier buyer relationship, so that uh, my suppliers understand my philosophy of doing the business and they will able to respond as per my expectations at what time I will be introducing a new product, what time I will be having new components desire from you and if my suppliers are not giving me that type of support, I will hardly be able to achieve any kind of strategic objective set for my organization. 
so supplier buyer relationship is nowadays a very very crucial thing and uh, many organizations uh, focus a lot on their vendor development uh, vendor development is one key aspect in achieving just in time total quality management uh, kanban and many other japanese philosophies related to manufacturing excellence are only possible when you have a good supplier buyer relationship so these many key areas we discussed and we saw that uh, how things are changing from the traditional view to the strategic view or to the enlightened view and this will give us a good idea in black and white that with respect to these things if i want to take the advantage of manufacturing as a competitive weapon what type of decision making or what type of my thought process should be so with this we come to end of this session thank you very much